Before and during World War II, Germany's Nazi party condemned drug use. But a new book paints a different picture of the life in the Third Reich. It claims German soldiers were often high on methamphetamines issued by their commanders to enhance their endurance. And many ordinary civilians, even Hitler himself, were substance abusers. It's all covered in the New York Times bestseller, Blitzed, Drugs in the Third Reich. And we're joined by author Norman Oler. Norman, welcome. Glad to be here. Let's start. Let's start with the, the soldiers in the in the Reich, and particularly the Blitzkrieg, which they were basically amped up on these drugs. Correct? Um, yes. The, the big irony is that when the Nazis took power in Germany, they they condemned all drugs and they made all drugs illegal. But in the mid '30s, yeah. uh, a new medicine was being developed. It was branded as pervitine, and it actually contained pure methamphetamine. So methamphetamine right. was a is, a is a German invention and. Um, they found out that methamphetamine reduces fear and it reduces your need to sleep. So the army got very interested in it and, and, and started examining whether it should be on a, used on a mass scale for their invasion. How mass scale did it become when it, in its use in the army? Well, they first, when they attacked Poland, um, it, wasn't, it wasn't organized yet, but they realized many soldiers knew about pervitine and, and had it and were taking it and were reporting it's, it's really good for the battlefield. And then before the Germans attacked France, um, the army decided to organize uh, the pervity and the methamphetamine use and uh, 35 million dosages of meth. 35 million? Wow. Were being, being distributed in April and May when uh, Germany got ready and then attacked uh, and surprised uh, France yeah. and, and, and the British armies who had no idea of what was going on, what the so-called Blitzkrieg was. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't just meth, it was also cocaine forms of oxycodone that were in, in circulation and used by Hitler himself. How did he first come into contact with these substances? Well, Hitler was known to the German and the world population. The propaganda always showed him as a teetotaler. Hitler wouldn't use any drugs, obviously. He's this, he's, he's, he was even portrayed as a health freak. He wouldn't even eat meat, no coffee, no alcohol. Um, but the reality was that in 36 he met a, a doctor called uh, Theo Morel, uh, a, a fascinating character, to, in, in my mind one of the most fascinating uh, characters of the whole uh, Second World War. Uh, Morel was a kind of um, celebrity doctor in Berlin and he was famous for giving vitamin injections. Mm. And when he met Hitler in 36, he started giving vitamin injections to Hitler and uh, he was, he was uh, giving probiotic medicine. So he was kind of a, an avant-garde mm. uh, doctor. And then later in the war, um, as Hitler developed serious health problems, um, Morel uh, um, started to give different things and, and, and this, uh, this um, gets more and more intense until um, towards the end of the war uh, Hitler takes much more than vitamins. And actually, What's he taking? Well, the, the, the most, uh, the, the hardest drug he's taking is an, opi an opioid, a half synthetic opiate called oikodal, which uh, the active ingredient is oxycodone. Mm -hmm which is a popular drug still today, uh, also yeah, in the United States. Yeah, and abused States. in the United yeah, States, sure. widespread. Hitler, would, Hitler would, would be getting 20 milligrams of this injected intravenously every other day, which is uh, a very hard, uh, very high dosage. And he was also getting cocaine swabs in his nasal areas as well, right? Well, after Operation Valkyrie on uh, July 20th, 1944, when a bomb exploded in, in Hitler's headquarters, um, Hitler was quite severely injured, even though uh, propaganda sh said the Führer is not injured. Um, mm -hmm. People died in that room and, and they claimed that Hitler was not injured. Actually, he was uh, quite severely injured and he had a, a state meeting the same day with Mussolini. So his doctor comes in, gives him the, the Oikodal shot and then another doctor comes in and gives him um, from, from that day on until uh, October the same year, uh, lots of cocaine. So yeah. he received cocaine in three months over 50 times, yeah. getting cocaine in the morning, getting Oikodal in the evening. So. What? This is uh, speedball. This is the speedball. Yeah. You know what's crazy, what's so actually. interesting also about your book, Norman, is 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 the whole climate in Germany leading up to the war and the development essentially of the modern drug market as we know it. In 1926, you write the country was the top morphine producing state and world champion when it came to exporting heroin. Well, we have to understand that the dangerous addictive drugs we know today like heroin or cocaine were once legal products yeah. and uh, they were actually German patents and they were an important part of the German pharmaceutical uh, economy. Um, so uh, in the 20s it was you could you could you could get these yeah. drugs uh, in any pharmacy. 
and they were making chocolates with them, it sounds <laughs> like. They were for everybody. It is a fascinating window into a less discussed chapter of German history. Norman Oler, thank you so much. Great to be here. Thank you.